What's up, everyone? Thank you so much for joining us today for the 1004 show. We are here, delighted to have Express Transportation Services' own, the Brian Wells. What's going on, Brian? How are you? What's up? I'm doing well, Zach. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. So you've been an so, entrepreneur for five years. Yeah, a little over five years now. Um, started my first business when I was 25 years old. Now I'm 31 now. And what was – so you were 25 when you started Express Transportation Services? Okay. Yes, sir. And was it because you loved transporting people? How did you come up with the idea of this This to be the, the company? Well – my my mom was my biggest motivator. Um, at the time um, that I started the company, my mom she was she was dying of pancreatic cancer, and um, I really wanted her to see me do my own thing. At at that moment, I was a pr assistant property manager, and we all know what that's about. You know, that was just um, you know getting beat up a lot on the job, and I really wanted my mom to see me you know do something and and stand on my own, and that's when I started Express Transportation Services. Um, I had a, the opportunity to look at the medical field to see what was a niche market that needed to be serviced, and that's the baby boomers, and that's kind of how I got it started, and uh, thankfully my mom got to see me start the business before she passed away, and um, and we're here today talking to you, so. Wow. I, um, I don't know what it would be like to, to, to lose someone that, you know, important, um, during such a you know important time of someone's not only life you know getting into kind of the next stages but but then to start a business too like did she encourage you to start a business or did she just want yeah. something more for you or like well she she definitely um encouraged me to start a business and i also um you know it, it was very motivating to me you know what she was going through and that's that's really just what motivated me. It's hurt for my mom to see me, you know, stand on my own too and do something that I had, I was passionate about. Yeah. And it wasn't easy. It's, it's not been easy. I've definitely had you know speed bumps and and roadblocks, but we've been able to get past them and and be successful at what we're doing. When you go through that, is your mom what you think yeah. of to get through or? Every day, every day, you know, it's um, and now you know it's my my wife and my kids, but. You know, and another on the way. My mom, yeah, and another one on the way. And uh, <laughs> thank you. And you know, it's uh, when you when you think about your mortality. And I'm 31 now, so I'm having all these conversations about what happens to my family, what do they get if I die, and all this stuff. But when I'm you know watching one of my parents go through that and transition in their life, um, it makes you when you look at your mortality that way, it definitely makes you more motivated and and definitely you know eager to take that next step in life because you realize that you know our stay here on earth is short and if you're not doing something that you're not passionate about and that is not rewarding to you um and your time yeah. then you know it's it's definitely you know that's all the motivation you need i think that it's it's one of those things my my mom is not passed and and i'm not trying to correlate or say this to this but I got my work ethic because of my mom, right? Yeah. And I didn't realize it until maybe two years ago when she had finally bought a house after lo basically losing her house 20 years before uh, due to a lot of things, but ultimately let's just call it a breakup uh, between my mom and my dad. And yeah. um, when that happened for 20 years, she basically had three jobs 24-7. And um, I learned that you know she was doing all this to make sure that me my brother my sister were going to live a better life and she didn't care about anything else and so to see it, moms are like that right you know they just like inspire us to to do things and so it's um yeah uh, it's it's beautiful to see that you know every day you're um you, you did this for her and now that legacy can can continue on Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Express Transportation Services, a little over five years old. You, It's a pretty easy business model, right? So you, you find people yeah. that n need to be moved um, and you move them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So pretty much I service um, the top rehab facilities in the area. So instead of going after individual clients, 
I went after the biggest, best rehab facilities on the south side. And I said, you know, I'm going to go in. I'm going to put the suit and tie on. I'm going to talk to the discharge planners, to the nursing staffs, to the administration of the hospitals, tell them that I'm out here, I'm ready to serve. And and I'll tell you what, just like, you know, it, it wasn't an easy road because I started off in the med, in the Medicaid field. And, you know, anybody who's been in Medicaid knows that, you know, as far as payment and, and, you know, just certain, you know, logistical things, it's really hard in the Medicaid market. So I transitioned from the Medicaid market to the private market. So I had to get in there and really talk face to face with people, just like anything else. Um, word of mouth and, and really sitting down with the right people is what, you know, transformed my company from being a, you know, to a bottom tier Medicaid provider to one of the top private companies in Hampton Roads today. When you cold call someone, and I know you get word of mouth as well, but when you cold call someone or first get an introduction, what do you say to them? Well, you know, that we are a private transportation company that serves um, the Hampton Roads area. We provide wheelchair and ambulatory um, transportation. But like you said, it is a need. It's not like somebody wants to ride with me. They have to. And with the growing demographic of the baby boomer generation, you know, it's 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 a necessity. And it's just a it, it is just a uh, it's just a never ending, you know, did service. your mom need to be moved a lot? No, she did. not No, she did not. Um, she did not do any transportation at all. Um, like I was saying, I just looked at the, the medical field okay. and I saw where there was a need and, and where people had to use a service. They didn't really have a choice. And in the Hampton Roads area, there's only, you know, three private companies and myself included. You are a collegiate athlete. Uh, you wrestled yes, in Pennsylvania, Kentucky. Where was it? I wrestled for uh, Virginia Military Institute for a year, and then I wrestled for three years for Campbellsville University in Kentucky. Kentucky. I knew we were Kentucky. somewhere. All right. Yeah. Um, did that prepare you? Like, did you get a, um, a business degree? Like, did, did did school help you at all, like, to prepare you for a life yeah. or anything? Or Well, it's a funny story. You know, wrestling is a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, one guy against another mm -hmm. type of sport. And in entrepreneurship, a lot of times – you know, we're, we're on our own and we have to stand on our own, especially in, in business ownership. Um, so wrestling, you know, all of my life since I was a kid, all the way through college, um, and that mental toughness, it definitely um, helped me become the person I am today. Um, but I will say, um, you know, I was a business major. I was a business marketing major, um, and, I, and that's the degree I graduated with. But I would say probably around my junior year is when I realized that you know, my my professor can teach me, but he couldn't teach me how to make money. You you get what I'm saying? So what would he teach you? You know, he can teach you theory. You know, you can learn accounting. I agree skills. with you 100. percent I'm just trying to figure out where, you know, what. So yeah. So, so so like, why go to school then? Well, you know, it's tradition. You know, they tell you go to school, make your grades, get a degree. But and and I don't. I would never tell somebody don't go to college and don't get a degree. No, but, but I, 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 so let's let's spin that a little differently. And I 100 percent agree with you. We both have degrees, so you know, someone listening would say, "Well, they have degrees, you know, whatever." No, I don't. I don't. I don't think the degree helped. Right? Education and life experiences are absolutely necessity. Yes. But the traditional way, like you said. And you said it was tradition, but the traditional way that people are taught is something that I think can be changed, should be changed. And, yeah. um, I mean, schools are inflating prices and people are not being able to find careers. So why, if people are actually getting smarter, like we think that they are, would they continue to do something where, when it's not necessarily working out? Well, I guess it, it depends on what you want to study. Well, I want a doctor. If you I want a doctor to be, you know, well yeah. educated and yeah. practice. <laughs> but someone in business, you get an MBA, you still have to start a company and figure out those things. Well, let me tell you where I learned the most about entrepreneurship and business ownership. It was after I got out of college okay. and I I was a independent business owner for a little while in a company called Amway. And I'm sure you know 
you've heard of Amway before, right? I no longer do it, but it was the education. It was the books, you know. So Rich Amway Dad, is or, like a, uh, an MLM type of thing? Yeah, it was a, it was an MLM business. But the, the mindset that I had to change from being an employee to being a business owner, it was through the education, the books, you know, stuff that I'm sure that you've read before. You know, um, how to how to win friends and influence people. You know, the power of thinking big. Rich who, dad, poor dad. Who wrote, who wrote all this? The, the I'm Dale, sorry? Dale Carnegie was that one? Dale Partridge? What's that guy's name? Yeah. Yeah. That's the um, winning um, – how to win friends and influence people. That was Dale Carnegie. That's one of the best sellers. But it was getting exposed to information like that is what really changed my mindset from, um, you know, do – I don't want to work for somebody else for the rest of my life. I want to build my own empire. And my mom, she always told me something. She said, Brian, you know, never fall asleep in somebody else's dream. Mm. And, you know, that was probably the number one thing that she told me that resonates throughout my life today is don't fall asleep in someone else's dream, you know, because, you know, the person that that has 50 employees that's laying on a beach drinking a margarita you know, their dream is being completed, but you're the one doing all the work. Mm. So I wanted to figure out how I can reverse that. And no, Amway didn't work out, but, you know, I'm here today and that information definitely helped. How do you make sure, though, that the people that you employ don't then go and turn that on on you? What, as far as start their own business? Yeah. I hope. I hope that they start their own business. Okay. Not everyone does. So I, I agree too. You know, the, the team that I have, I, I tell them, look, I don't know how long I'm going to have you guys for, but I want to empower you guys to be able to do whatever you guys want to in life because I feel like the more that I can um, ready you for life, the more opportunities that um, – or the better I'll feel about being able to help people. But then also um, from a business perspective, it's it's – you know, if we're if we're creating great talent over and over and over again, it's going to uh, reciprocate itself and, and, and hopefully do well for them as it would for us and our clients that we, we would have at that time. You know, and I, I totally agree. And when somebody looks back and they say, you know, how was my experience with Zach Miller? You know, the most important thing to me when somebody says, how was my experience with Brian Wells or working for Brian Wells? I want them to say that I was somebody who motivated them to do greater and encouraged them to be greater in life. And that's all that you can really ask for, um, because we all need mentors. We all need, you know, somebody to, to point us in the right direction. But you never want to be the person who held somebody back in life. So. You know, I definitely never want to, you know, limit somebody's dreams or aspirations. Why do you think people say that, though, right? So I was having a conversation with an associate and um, – or, or, or just a friend, and they said um, the, the place where they're at, they're employed, um, that per- place is a threatening place, I guess, where they're like, it's our way or no way. Uh, no, you can't do other things to better your life. Um, you know, it's this or nothing. Like, why, why, like, it doesn't make sense to me, right? But have you, do, like, do you know why or do, do you, why are people thinking that way? Why are companies not encouraging people to live a better life? Well, you know, not every company's Google. Not every company has the resources to make their Yeah, but their that's a bad thing. Happy. Google's tough to be, yeah. right? So why aren't you, you know, the Allstate run by Scott Janae in Chesapeake? Right. Who want mm-hmm. like like that's a better example of someone or why aren't you express transportation exp- uh, um, services? Right. That's a better example because there's more businesses that look like those two or a hatch than they are Google. Google. I mean, Google obviously encourages it, we think. But like, why? Why do you why do you accept it? Why do you invest time, money, resources into something that could go away like that? Well, you know, it's – you mean invest time, money, and resources in Knowing to, that they're going to go do something else. Well, because I mean – I think that's where people get stuck, right? People feel like, yeah, I want to do this thing. But it's like, mm-hmm. do they really? Well, my, my – um, the, the employee that I look for is someone who already has 
some type of income coming in. So you're talking about a retired veteran, somebody who's not necessarily worried about money all the time. Right. Um, I have learned that um, you know when you when you employ you know younger people, they they tend to want to have the same exact financial result that you have, and and hmm. maybe that's a millennial generation. You're a millennial. You know, I'm a millennial. Um, I'm a millennial. But, maybe we could call this millennial show. A mo- I Welcome like to that. the millennial show. No, <laughs> I hate tagging so, people. So I, I have a transportation company. My folks are drivers. I don't think that it's the end all be all. You know, it's not the end all be all for their life. I hope it's not. But the person who I look for is someone who already has some type of additional income and is maybe, you know, into their 50s. So you have a business. It's, it's going as well as you want it to. Obviously, most people want things to be going better. But you then decide that you want to start a young professionals group. Where did you find the time of in in the day to be able to do something like that, and like what like what are your goals with and the group is called P Forty. Yeah, the the professionals under forty network or Hampton Roads first millennial made network, um, and I really found the time to do that because I figured out when I was growing Express, when I started getting involved in the community, and I started giving back, mm-hmm. I realized that. It was doing something great for me personally, and it was also doing something great for me professionally. And it was putting me around influential people that could open up doors for me. So, you know, I really, me. I met you. <laughs> you see how great my life is now? <laughs> I can't stop smiling. No. <laughs> I have that effect but, um, on people. Yeah, man, you're a pretty good looking guy. So <laughs> it's, uh, you know, giving back to the community and being involved. Um, That's what really sparked my mind into thinking, you know, I really want to put my peers onto this. So our co-founder, Scott Medina, and I, we started Professionals Under 40 Network. um, And the premise is really to network for a cause, give back to the community, but also uplift business owners, entrepreneurs, people that are inspiring to do more with their life. They might have a nine to five, Mm -hmm. but they want to be part of a community that is going to uplift them. And so that's really how P40 and the professionals under 40 network started. Interesting. And he has been around for a year, a year and a half now, and people can learn more about yeah. that at p40youngprofessionals.com. What's the website? Uh, it's uh, p40network.com. p40network.com. And if you guys are interested in express transportation services, you can head on over to your expresstransportation.com. We'll put both of those links in the notes below. Brian, so. I didn't know that about your mom. Um, so that I, I think, you know, understanding the inspiration as to why you started ETS is something that um, is is really cool. Um, and I think that there's probably a lot of people out there that uh, might have lost a loved one or is losing a loved one. And they don't know what they could do to maybe give back, if that's the right way to say it, or to um, just give um, – you know, give thoughts like you would kind of uh, as you're writing a book to someone. And it seems like that's really similar to um, to what you've done. But you're about to say something. Yeah, um, it, it actually happened twice in my life. And um, express transportation was a result of my mother passing away um, or, or being sick and soon after passing away. And um, Professionals Under 40 Network actually started developing at around the time that my mother-in-law um, right before she passed away, she came to visit. My wife's from Mongolia, and my mother-in-law came to visit um, to see my son for the first time. And while she was here, she was diagnosed with leukemia, mm. and she passed away within five months. But when she went into the hospital, um, that's when you know Scott and I made the decision to start P40. So I look at it like death is the motivation for life. You know, when you see it taken from somebody. You know, to me, you can you can ball up, you can run away, um, you can cry. All those emotions, you know, are fine. But at the end of the day, you have to keep living. So I, I really look at the tragedies that I've had in my life, and I've had a great life, you know. But things have happened, and death is one one thing that will all will happen to all of us. Everyone does. But I took those. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I fed off of those situations and kind of to take myself, not run from it. 
but to make something productive come out of those moments and that passion is why I started both companies. Wow. It's, um, I'm not usually a speechless kind of guy, as you know, but I'm very heartfelt there. Death is the motivation for life. Brian Wells. Is that your line? That's my line. I made that up. I, I like that. Um, we'll definitely use that. Um, I think you well, for, for use yeah. it. Just make sure. Just make sure if you use that line that I get my royalties. Okay. Your royalties will be in. Um, how do I say <laughs> this? Um, we'll just credit you, and maybe you'll win okay. a, a startup championship belt um, January twenty sixth of twenty seventeen soon guys for those of you who don't know brian was nominated as a finalist of um, hatch's big state of the startup community address we are giving away our first time small business championship belt um and brian is one of five finalists and we're super stoked to see who wins that um i don't even know who it is yet so um he didn't want to try it on though to see if it fits so you know we'll see what happens but brian um, thank you so much for being with us today. Death is the motivation for life. Really being able to create businesses due to the the bad that happens in life, but has really turned that around and has done the P40 Professional Network and also Express Transportation Services. Brian Wells, thanks for joining us today on the 1004 Show. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me, Zach. Absolutely. See you soon.